What's up, YouTubers? It's Chad Strat, a.k.a. Montana Chill. I um, wanted to bring you just a, a quick discussional demonstration of, um, you know, how to, how to maximize your low end uh, in a pop hip-hop uh, mix. There's a couple subtle decisions that you can make um, that will really allow that low end to come out and still get um, you know, get your transients leveled out compression-wise. Um, and a lot of people don't, uh, there's a lot of subtlety, subtle decisions that you can make to achieve that. So I'm going to talk about mixing today. Um, and to, to kick that off, one of the things that I wanted to, to show you guys, some of you may already know this, uh, but there is a control room dial here. The first thing I want to say is protect your ears, okay? You, what you want is you, you really want your master fader at Unity and you want to utilize your control room dial to, to, to protect your ears, whether it's monitors, headphones. Um, I mix it with headphones a lot, at least initially, um, just because, you know, I live in a I have a family, um, a wife and two girls, and I have neighbors and et cetera. So I like to just, you know, while I'm concentrating, I want to block the noise. It's more to block the outside noise out than it is about me getting a more clear sound uh, when it comes to early stages of mixing. Um, but you want to utilize that control room output. And the way that you do that in your rack, um, you want to make sure, I think by default, they, they are here on your master out um, to your, your hardware out. Um, let's see here, audio and out, there we go. Um, yeah, to your output, your stereo out. And what you really want is you want to move those over to uh, control room. Boom, boom. And all that does is allow you to monitor uh, with the control room out rather than your Unity fader. And that's a huge, dis that's a critical piece when it comes to um, mastering. Uh, because when you get to your, your mastering rack, um, you want that you want that unity level as much as possible um, to you know you want to you don't want your volume of what you're hearing to control uh, your limiting and your EQ and your compression um, post mix. So that's that's the first tip is uh, make sure you're using control room out. Uh, the second tip I wanted to show you uh, just you know what I do. I don't. This isn't a problem so much on on bass synths or bass bass guitars or uprights, but in terms of drums, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you one important thing, um, and we'll listen to this track. And actually, what I'll do is I'll play. So here's my drum track. It's not too bad, uh, but what I consistently do. And there is a rack extension version of this, is the Moloch compressor. Um, and, and I just want to talk, I don't want to focus as much on this specific compressor, rack extension, or VST either way. But I do want to focus on why I like it, why I use it, um, specifically on drums. So on drums, I really want punch. But a lot of times, if you're using overall compression, you're sacrificing or you're, you're normalizing low end to get that, whether, you, I mean, specifically if you're using, if you're using peak compression, um, just strictly, you're just going to marginalize the, the peaks and you're going to bring, you know, that there may actually be low end peak in there that you're going to sacrifice in the process of that. Um, so what I do is I like a compressor and there's a lot of compressors that have this, that have a high pass filter, meaning that the compression is only going to affect if you have your frequency band and your low end is here. It's going to, it's only going to compress from here to here, your, your, your lower mids to your highs, and then you're going to pass the low end right through unaffected, uncompressed. And so when we, when I play this back, I can squash the mids here. some limiting, put some makeup. And the other thing that I think is important is a dry mix or parallel compression. I like I like a plugin that ex, that allows me to pass in back, to pass back in some of that original um, punch, the original transients. 
that's really helpful in terms of like, um, your, you know, just your transients and, you know, getting those peaks. You don't want to do a lot, just a little bit. But this sounds really good to me. So if I pass this, here's the original. You can see I didn't lose any load in this, but I'm getting a little bit more punch. That's without. So there's without. Those transients are really poking through, and I didn't lose any low end in the process of that. So that's tip number two. Use a compressor that, that has parallel compression and a high-pass filter so that you can compress only the pieces of that kit that you need to compress. That's how to protect your low end on your kick. Um, and some people even go so far as to separate you know, their, you know, their drum parts out into separate mix channels, and that's things you can do as well, and then just compress a group of them. There's other ways to do that, um, but the important thing is allow that kick to to let its high end frequencies be compressed, but not the low end, um, and that will just bring that low end out in your mix, as you heard there. Um, so the third thing is uh, I'm going to show my insert effects. This is the standard master. Um, I'm not going to use that. Uh, I'm going to use uh, a specific. Uh, let's go here, company. A specific set that I have here, and I'm going to talk a little bit um, about this. Uh, there's other YouTube videos about this, but this is sort of a, a multi-phase uh, mastering. EQ, widening, uh, bus compress, and then master, master limiter. Okay, That's the general idea. But the one thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the same thing here on my bus compressor. I'm using a, a high-pass filter. Um, and I'll turn this on, let you listen to it without it. So, I'm high pass filtering uh, about, basically this is just capturing the subs. So it's still gonna get some of that punch and, and you know, squeeze that but the sub frequencies it's going to let through and I'll sometimes even roll this down you know somewhere around 80 um, depending on the song uh, but for the most part I'm roughly around 40 um, subs uh, letting those through um, 80 is probably better um, let's listen to what the difference is not a lot of difference here we just don't have the subs um, the second thing is subtlety, uh, where I said the second thing, the second part of this third piece, uh, which is your your mastering section, is get those low ends coming through, but subtlety, it, it's all about subtlety. I try to stay between zero and two on the bus, and between zero and two on the limit. And this does a couple things. Um, visually, this allows me, or mentally allows me to make sure that I have consistency in my mixes because generally speaking when I go to full mastering um, in a different software like uh, Logic um, that has more robust mastering tools um, you know this this allows me consistency from song to song to song to song to song if I if I'm being fairly consistent with my EQ fairly consistent with my widening my bus comp and my mastering limiter excuse me um, I'm gonna. That's that's gonna be good for the overall effect of, of the project. Um, and so I do encourage you to, to be consistent in, in your approach to mixing. Um, so that, that's that's three good ways that you can get more volume out of your bass in a mix that's really centric around high pass filtering uh, with compression. So hope that's helpful to you. It's had a huge impact on my mixes. I've been able to get a lot more low end out of my mixes, a lot more body out of them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a solid tip. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Make sure you give a like, a share, and please comment. Take care.